Hello, this is iPersona here and in case you haven't caught episode 1, also known as part 1, The Case, please go and watch that video first before coming to this video which is part 2, uh, episode 2 sorry, which covers part 2 and part 3, the review and my opinion. Uh, if you haven't watched part 1, please go and watch it first, then that way you will have the big picture of what this whole thing is and basically you have a more complete understanding of how the case has progressed so far. It might be a bit long at about 15 minutes for the part 1 but for those of you who are seriously interested I advise you to check that one out first because it seriously is highly informative and for those international audience you get a Singaporean take on this issue or rather an Asian take on this issue and since she has been administrated to Mount E Hospital which is in Singapore and I'm Singaporean I felt that now since the issue is in home not just close to home but I have more information and more in-depth detail of what actually transpired alright so now from December 30th which is today uh, I'll read one article and I'll give you my take on this Okay, so in the article it's titled Victim Sent to Singapore for for with the two inverted commas Best Medical Care. Now, the Indian envoy envoy responds to criticisms in India that the move was politically motivated. First and foremost, I'd like to tell you that it is true for those of you who don't understand politics, it is highly dirty and uh how does how shall I put this? try not to get involved with it but uh, my dad knew it was politically motivated a few days before this article came out and he explained to me how it was so I'll give you a little insight to it and on top of that I tell you give you a little glimpse of what actually happened in that horrifying tragedy I won't say too much because if what I say may be too graphic and secondly when my father wanted to tell me the, the real story, I declined because I was in a state of extreme shock at the one piece of information he told me which I'm going to share with you all and therefore I will not continue. I'll just give one little uh, bit of tidbit of info. And so over here, they said that in the article, all, all article content will be shown in the video if I can and will be in the description where you can download all the pictures and you can read the article for yourself so you know that I'm not making anything up I'm taking this straight from the Straits Times, Singapore's biggest newspaper and therefore you will get the most and best information from what I know and from the newspaper itself uh, Okay, so I'll quote from the newspaper right now. Let's let to let you guys hear, and it says here, the High Commissioner to Singapore, TCA Rakhavan, said that I think she was brought to Singapore to make sure she was given the best possible medical treatment. My experience at Mount Elizabeth Hospital convinces me that she was given very good medical treatment. It was a highly dedicated and comprehensive multidisciplinary team that attended to her but her injuries were very extensive. And to further quote, the press conference held at the High Commission in Grange Road hours after the death of the victim, reporters asked if airlifting the 23-year-old victim to Singapore on Thursday was the right decision given the severe injuries she, sus she had sustained. There have been criticisms in India that the move was politically motivated to get the victim out of the country to quell street protests. This is the exact same thing my father told me earlier, days before this came out and it is true. If you refer back to episode 1, I briefly mentioned the timeline of the whole rape case and if you actually listen to it, and checked out the photos, you have seen that there were multiple protests almost every single day. For you guys who don't know, I'll give you an example to think about. Okay, this is how dirty politics can be, and yeah, just listen. So let's say she was raped, and then she was sent to let's say hospital A. I, the name of the hospital is here, but I, that's for for simplicity. 
let's just call it hospital A, okay? So she was sent to hospital A and she's being treated there. Where do you think people will protest at? Obviously, the answer, hospital A. So everyone, with no doubt, you don't have to create a Facebook group and get people to join and plan an event. No. Everyone will go to hospital A, they'll sit down there, outside, they will chant, they will protest, they will pray, they will hold candles. Basically, everyone will congregate outside hospital A. So what this happens is, it turns into a protest after a while. When the police get called in, things turn violent. Even one uh, con constable, if I'm not wrong, died. One policeman died from, su from injuries suffered during the protest. And so what it is was every day they were protesting, people were trying to go to the Indian, um, to the, to the, what's that again? The, they were trying to make their way to the, uh, hold on, uh, I'm looking for it. They were trying to make their way to the Indian Gate Monument, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, and every day that was happening. So basically, no police force in the world has the power to stop daily protest it is a strain on the resources and it is not effective if you have to continue that throughout the main reason why they flew her away uh, the, the, the Indian government was playing very very um, tactically and very dirty right now but why they sent her to Singapore is because look at it this way uh, let's say everyone's protesting outside your government building or a hospital or whatsoever and you suddenly fly her out, what? You think tens of thousands of people will buy airplane tickets overnight and fly over just to protest? No. And in Singapore, basically protesting is done indoors. Okay, uh, this is a uh, this is not really true, but it's a joke in Singapore. It's a insider. It's a how to say a, a small time joke that protesters go indoors or something like that. Yeah, you know. So don't take it too hard. But in Singapore. How many people would actually fly in all the way from India to Singapore just to protest? You have only like what? A handful at max, not the, which cannot even compare to the scale of the protest and lobbying that is seen in India at that time. The politi political motivation here was to get rioters off the streets in India and get them back to whatever job they were doing previously and to quell the protest on the streets because it's a, they, they found it a waste of police men's, uh, well, waste of resources and manpower just to deal with this sort of protest. Secondly, they said here that in a BBC report, when questioned by Indian News Channel on whether India lacked the necessary medical facilities to treat the victim, Dr. Yatin Mehta, a Delhi based doctor who was accompanying the victim on a flight to Singapore, said India would not compare with the city state. He said, in my opinion, comparing a government hospital with Singapore's private hospital, yes, Mount E is a private hospital, there is no comparison. Basically, although New Delhi is considered a city-state, you would have to consider the difference between a city-state, a rural state, and basically what it is that a rural state definitely their medical resources and manpower or expertise and speciality would be much less than a city-state. Okay? Therefore, if you were to be treated in a rural hospital, your medical care would be much less or not as professional and up to standard as what you would get in a city-state. I won't say that New Delhi is a rural place isn't right but in comparison to Singapore it would seem like this Indian official uh, is trying to is trying to make that kind of statement basically it's just a cover-up and yeah after all the article was Singapore it was in inverted commas that Singapore has the best medical care and therefore they sent her here but the reason behind it was purely 
politically motivated, which was to get protesters off the streets and to, to not waste their police resources on trying to quell protests. Uh, furthermore, I'd like to mention that she had multiple organ failure and was in ICU for the entire time that she was in in uh, Singapore's Mount E Hospital. And the cost related to her treatment was in Singapore was borne by the Indian government. If you haven't seen the previous video, it, the Indian government gave her a blank check. Now that may seem like a blank check, but in reality, you have to question whether it really was a blank check. Because let if you take it as politically motivated, which it is, it really is, no matter what you say, it is politically motivated. Why would they send her to Singapore? And, and I mean, okay, see, ICU, or intensive care unit, is whereby the most serious illness and whatnot are basically the people there are under direct attention from doctors and nurses and comparable comparing it to the general ward ICU has a high nursing ratio that means you are under scrutiny for the the, the period of time that you are in that ICU for you guys who don't know ICU stands for intensive care unit and they have highly trained professionals in that area. Okay, there's uh, and apart and it was also stated that she has no, she was not allowed any visitors. This is in in ICU. You are actually actually allowed visitors, but only you are limited in the number of visitations. Yeah, no, sorry, you are limited in the, the time frame. You can be there the time that you can actually visit the person and because of the visitation hours and the amount of people in there. So basically she due to her multiple organ failure, she was most likely on a ventilator which which will in which we can eat. for those of you who who know, it means that her lungs were not well, she needed an oxygen support and most likely she was already unconscious and news, the newspapers stated that they gave her strong antibiotics and something to stimulate her immune system this suggests that medications to boost or increase the growth factor of the white blood cells was used now the contradicting fact here is that although newspapers report everything they know and it is true but the doctors tell them what happen but they don't connect the dots for you so i will tell you right now that when they say strong medication yes the newspaper's not lying he really was on strong medication but to boost white blood cells now if you guys do not already know white blood cells are the ones that fight infections she was given strong antibiotics basically strong antibiotics meant a range of antibiotics but the media just likes to hear what strong and yeah, basically those type of words to infer that well they're doing their best and giving her the best but strong meant a wide range of antibiotics because they did not know at that time what infection really was it takes a few days to to put the pus under microscope and to find out what before decreasing the spectrum of antibiotics used secondly they said she had multiple organ failure now what happens is that the doctor will tell you there are multiple organ failure. So what's the next course of action? That is to get organ transplant. The fact is that there are many, 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 uh, how, there are many factors that you have to consider before putting a person to organ transplant. Firstly, can the person go into organ transplant? If you are unconscious and all this, it makes it harder and I think it's not appropriate to send her into organ transplant. Secondly, are there donors? Thirdly, thirdly, there is you have to consider this. If you are unconscious and you need an organ transplant, and there's someone who's conscious and needs an organ transplant, most likely if if you need oxygen support and it is stated that she was given a lot of risk, uh, long, a lot of how, how should I put it, 
CPR for a long duration while on the flight here, that would mean that most likely, although you, can, you could resuscitate the heart, she was already brain dead, which meant that she was already unconscious. Therefore, would you actually give an unconscious person, a brain dead person, an organ or will you give someone else an organ? Because organs are rare, they don't come by easily. And they'll give it to someone who needs it and no, not who needs it, who can better use the organ. Secondly, whenever you transplant organs, if you guys don't know, I'll spell it out for you. But you'll be on medication for your whole life because your white blood cells will attack the organ and will refuse the organ. It will try to kick the organ out and if that happens, the organ will die. Now when the organ dies, it is a wasted organ. And what it is, is that someone else could have benefited more from an organ. So if your white blood cells will attack and reject an organ and she was already under heavy antibiotics to increase her white blood cells, if they gave her the organs and the white blood cells increased, they would fight the organ and when it fights the organ, they have to give medication to suppress the white blood cells. And if they give medication to suppress the white blood cells, then it will be an open party for all the bacteria and infection in her and therefore that will, that would completely defeat the purpose. Therefore, in her, in her current condition under severe organ failure, they really could not give an organ transplant because firstly, she was unfit due to the reasons I have told you. Secondly, there will be a rejection which will totally defeat the purpose and thirdly, she was most likely already brain dead which means that other people would have a greater use for the organs. I'm not trying to be mean or anything, I'm not hinting or suggesting anything, I'm telling you what really happened and why certain actions were taken. This is linking the dots in the newspapers if you guys don't know. It is highly contradictory to someone who actually reads the newspaper and understands these terms that are being passed around. The newspaper was not lying but they were never given the opportunity or the insight on how to connect all these dots to someone who can see these dots and can understand medical terms which I am explaining to you now this is the logic behind it she was most likely already brain dead multiple organ failure the most common one will be kidney she most likely was on kidney dialysis the next common one I don't I, I can't remember if it was mentioned, but if it was mentioned, it would be liver. But liver dialysis is still experimental, so you can't expect someone on liver dialysis to live that long as well. Now, for you guys who... Uh, ICU in Singapore is a dual speciality. But basically, it, it, it is not compulsory in other countries to be dual speciality, nor is it compulsory to have... Uh, one speciality before taking ICU, but in Singapore it is. You have to have one speciality such as anesthesiology or A&E or something of that sort before you can go into ICU. Now in Singapore, the most common ones is ICU and anesthesia or ICU and respirology. In Canada, an uh, example here would be ICU and A&E, which is accident and emergency. Now, on top of this, on top of this, I would like to talk about the the blank check. Yes, the blank check that was given to her. Now, if she was already brain dead and given the severity of her injuries, as you could see, she came to Singapore for about two or three days before she she passed on. If it's if it was so, and Singapore has such such professional people attending to her and the best medical care and she still could not pass on you have to also understand that the younger the patient is roughly her age which is 23 very young highly tragic that she has passed on and she could have became a great doctor next time she, young people young patients can take a lot of trauma 
Okay, their bodies are highly resilient, able to fight very well. But for her to die in such a short span showed that the, the, the injuries she sustained were honestly too brutal and too serious that she could not be, she could not last so long. Now, if the outcome were the same, this is political again, and only the cost differs because Singapore comparing to India was much more expensive. Why would they send someone to Singapore where it costs more and the outcome is the same? There must be a reason behind it and that comes back to the protesting whereby they send her to Singapore, they would pay more and if the outcome was the same and she would die in both India and Singapore, they could send her to maybe Bangladesh or somewhere where it's even cheaper. But why Singapore? That comes back to because they wanted the the media to represent them in a good light that they were giving her best medical care, which is true. Singapore gives one of the best. I would like to say the best, but well, you can't be biased in this case, so I'll say one of the best. But it is more politically motivated. And furthermore, you have to question whether it really is a blank check. Technically, it is a blank check because the government said, okay, you can build any amount and we'll pay for it, you know, because the, the her father is highly rural. He, he won't have the money to even airlift her to Singapore, much less pay for treatment. But the government stepped in basically to quell public anger to show that they were doing something. So they gave her a blank check. Technically, it is. I'm repeating myself right now. But you have to consider whether it really was a blank check because the moment she was transferred to Mount E, uh, doctors gossip, yes, they do a lot, and therefore news came to my f my father really quickly, and from there, all the doctors knew she would not survive due to her extensive injuries. So you have to think how if she was. You see, you see, the, the, the government when they transferred her, her here due to her extensive injuries and the fact that our doctors knew immediately she will not survive, it shows that they knew that she, they and they expected that she will not live past a, a few a few more days or basically she will not live long and therefore is it really a blank check? I mean come on, let's say one opera Let's say, let's say uh, a billionaire tells you that you j you need to save his son, okay, just for one day. Are you going to bill him one million for one day? No, right? Because why? It's only one day. Secondly, this is a huge issue. You will not dare to charge too high an amount because this is a this is a worldwide media issue. It's public. And people will question whether you're taking this and trying to milk something out of it for yourself as well. So you won't charge that high. You will just charge the amount that is required for the duration. You won't try to take advantage of it. Therefore, the Indian government knew the moment they transferred her that she will not live for long. And therefore, they gave her a blank check because they knew... Uh, they knew... Or they could estimate the amount they will cost them and they saw no potential danger or any chance of her becoming a vegetable and staying under a, un, under a ventilator for many many multiple years because that would be a huge amount. The government knew she would not survive more than a week or a few more days after transferring to Singapore. That's why they gave her a blank check. You guys may not agree with what I'm saying right now, but politics is highly dirty. This is just, I would say this is the most logical approach of why they will do that. If you actually think about it, or you know a little bit about politics, you will understand where I'm coming from. You don't have to agree though. Everyone's entitled to their own opinion, but this is, I would say, what was happening behind the scenes. Another example would be, let's say your your father gives you $50 and he asks you, oh, go to the shopping center and buy an apple. Let's say there are two shopping centers, okay? Let's say one is Walmart and the other one is 
Okay, no, shouldn't name. Let's say one in shopping center A, the apple costs one dollar. In shopping center B, apple costs one fifty. So you go to shopping center A that costs one dollar. You buy the apple. You come back. You won't you won't tell your father that oh this apple costs fifty dollars and you pocket all because why? People will question your father. Question you. Are you sure? But if you charge two dollars, your father might not just might not question you. He may, but the chances are dramatically much much less because close one eye. Because B sells at one fifty, he may he may thought that you went to B and so he only has a loss of fifty cents. This is one of the reasons why the blank check isn't really a blank check at all. It is just a cover up. Okay, so therefore, now I would like to continue and moving on, I would like to talk about. Okay, she, it is also mentioned in the article that she has suffered from severe organ failure and following injuries to her body and brain. Now, the mention of brain already, like I said, it just confirms the fact that she was most likely brain dead already. And brain dead already, you can only be in a ventilator for so long. After that, well, you're basically a vegetable who, even if your heart is pumping blood, a damaged brain will never recover. For those of you who don't know about medicine and all, uh, I'll tell you right now, a damaged brain will never ever recover. There is no way to repair any brain. It is the one or one organ that you cannot transplant at all for obvious reasons and yes it will never recover so if you are already brain dead why would they give an organ to a brain dead person just to keep her alive when she is theoretically alive because her heart is still pumping but she's just brain dead so she will never wake up to and they, wouldn't they rather give it to someone who is you know who needs it more like Let's say someone who needs a kidney more has a kidney failure, but it's but it's just her the person's kidney who is spoiled, and the whole person is totally mobile, awake, intelligent, able to respond. It's just a kidney failure, a a patient with only kidney failure and otherwise in perfect health. So you get to see you know how politics works, and you get to see why. It seems so contradictory, and when you read the reports, you're like, "Oh, the doctor says." You read the newspapers, and uh, they're reporting, "Oh, the doctor says this, 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 that, 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 that." But why do, doesn't she have an organ transplant? Because, like what I told you, whether she's fit, whether there's organs, whether they should give her the organ or not. Our doctors are highly professional, highly trained. They knew from the start. That's why, and they gossip a lot. So er, all the doctors knew that she would not survive, and therefore. Not only that, she was unfit for an organ transplant. Therefore, even though she had severe organ failure and needed a transplant, there was no point and to give her, and therefore they did not go through with it. <sighs> Next, we would like to talk about the caste system, based and on medical tourism. Basically, if you guys didn't know, a lot of people who have medical conditions do some do actually come to Singapore. And this, I'm I being sixteen, learn in my geography classes. Okay, we, our geography classes is split into uh, human and physical geography. In human geography, we learn about medical tourism. Basically, medical tourism is that patients will go to countries with extremely good medical care and to receive such medical care because well the level of technology in Singapore is very high our expertise are very good very in-depth and we can and our medical services are excellent world-class so people actually do travel to Singapore for medical treatment this is also better known as medical tourism Then there's the and the fact that there's the incident that happened and there's also compare and contrast of Singapore and India's medical care. 
as I mentioned earlier at the start of this commentary. Medical care in rural areas, as I, was, as I have also learned in geography class, is definitely much less professional than those you see in the city-state because the city-state has a higher concentration of people, first of all, which also means that more people need these services rather than a rural area and to make it more accessible, they have better medical services there. This is all natural, you may want to argue, but this is true. It is the way of life and how resource and how limited resources are spread out in case you guys don't know doctors are always on a shortage because it takes high level of skill and not only that commitment to actually be a doctor and therefore they are always in a shortage and this means that they have to forego some places to give the experienced doctors put them into more into no not more into places that require the expertise more often the most and that would be city areas whereby they will their assistance and skills will, would benefit more people than putting them in a rural area. Uh, in a rural area, surgery may be done by a GP or a general practitioner. Anesthesia may be may even be given by a nurse. US does have nurses who give anesthesia, but in city states, you have an experienced surgeon who who maybe does hundred, two hundred surgeries a year to to give you as a uh, operation, whereas a GP in a rural area may only do one or two a year. Therefore, the level of expertise is very, very drastically different if you are in a city state or in a rural state receiving medical care. To compare Singapore and India, in Singapore, if you wear a bikini and walk around the streets, Honestly speaking, you will never be molested. Okay, I'll tell you that if you come to Singapore and you actually try it, you will never be molested. If someone molests you and another passersby sees it, he will automatically shout molest and in under 10 seconds or even, okay, instantly, okay, you will find 15 people beating up that guy who tried to molest you or a girl but I don't think a girl would have so you find 15 people beating him up and basically sending him off to be arrested by the police. In India it's much more different. India considers India has the caste system and they also have what they consider well, north, south, east, west, blah blah blah. This type of system whereby the north will say, oh, we're different from the south. And the south will say, oh, we're different from the east. And the east will say, oh, we're different from the west. Basically, every single Indian is like different from each other depending on where they live. Therefore, it is also known that men in India, in the in the northern India, where New Delhi is, is more literous. Uh, yes, that's why most likely this happened in India as well. But this has been blown into a big issue. But in India... If you were if you were sexually preyed on, assaulted, or molested in public, and she was she was molested on a bus, what happens is that that guy who molested her, all his friends join in to rape her and strip her, and they even beat her male companion. So what does this show? It shows that in India, their moral ethics and everything, it's I wouldn't say it's worse. We cannot judge just by one incident. But I would like to say that they, they join in. They don't defend her. They don't stop it. They join in. Even the guy who tried to defend her got beaten up. In Singapore, if you were to be touched inappropriately, the moment you shout molester or someone or a passersby sees it, a pedestrian sees it and he shouts, the guy who tried to do it will be swarmed immediately. And they will put him down and make sure he can't even squeak. That is the social difference. And there comes in the police. Now in case you haven't read or, or saw some of the pictures that will be in the description for you to read, download or in, in the video already. Yes, the police in another rape case 10 days after this, after, after this medical student was raped, the police actually told her to drop the case and in India if the guy is convicted of raping you and you marry him, he will be 
set off free. And in that case, 10 days later, she was told to drop the case or to marry him by the police. And so she took her life. Okay, she, she took her life. That is how messed up the system is. There's so many loopholes. I mean, if you were to marry a rapist, wouldn't he get all his friends and rape you every day? You'd be in a living hell. You'd be, you'd be like sealed in a room or a dungeon and given garbage food and all that. And they'll just take the time to rape you every day, isn't it? That's why I can understand why she took her life. I wouldn't have wanted it to happen to her. But the law does not protect the women there. Therefore, they result to these extreme uh, cases where they take their own lives just to protect their, di their dignity or whatever is left of it after the law tries to deal with them. The law there is unfair to women in this aspect and it has to change. I hope the government does walk the talk and change the rules as it is, change the laws, do reviews on it, listen to the people more, especially the women. If you don't already, already know, all of us are human beings. We all deserve the same and equal respect and dignity you give to your friends. Okay? <sighs> White and black are the same. Yellow, whatever you want to call Asians, yellow. I have heard the term before. It is derogatory derogatories or whatever way you want to pronounce it yes you shouldn't go around calling all this black person or this white person you don't go calling people yellow this, this is just plain racism it is discrimination and it's at the base at bare minimum or the worst depending on how you would like to see it basically you're putting down people and we are one species do, do you see earthworms calling another species of earthworms? Oh, you're more pink than me, so you're pinky and I'm whitey? No, you don't see that. Well, actually, you can't tell, but yeah, it's just an example, okay? You, 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 you don't see what bald eagles calling other eagles hairy? No, just because bald eagle doesn't have hair on his head and other and other species of eagles have, do they call them that? You, they don't. So why should we discriminate our own race when we are the ones who are at the top of the food chain and we populate the entire earth and we are so much bigger than any other animals? In terms of numbers, we have more numbers than almost every single organism every single animal or on the planet except for maybe insects like for an example the ants and we are but we are so many times bigger than them why should we discriminate if ants in a colony can work together to fight off enemies and all that but we can't ah <sighs> I just have to sign in. Hmm. Secondly, there is the caste system whereby if if okay, the re six hundred and fifty plus cases are re of rape cases are reported to the police each year. Now you may, may be thinking this is a lot. You may think this is little, whatever it is. But this is only the number reported. You have to take into context that some people don't even report these cases at all because first and foremost they've already given up hope on the government the pol if they try to report what happens the police will not only tell them to drop the case they will force them to drop the case and in some cases the police like in this case told the other woman oh go and marry him or they may pretend to just write down a case and in the end they might not even publish your case at all in the book so then what happens is you are led to falsely believe that you have put up a case against this guy but nothing will ever get be done. So the law is too slack, the police. There's, maybe this is drilled into the system somehow but it has to change, you know. You can't live like this forever. Then there is also the caste system 
if a person from a higher caste rapes someone from a lower caste, the media attention on the... No, 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 that's the wrong way of saying it. If a lower caste person was raped, there would hardly be any media attention about it than if a higher, if a person, if a woman in a higher caste was raped. And we are all human beings, we are the same. And plus, they are all the same race. Why would they limit themselves to different castes? People from different castes, if we learn this in social studies in school, but for you, those of you who don't know, caste system basically people in different, in a, in a certain caste system can only marry people in, in that, in their caste system. They can't marry someone below or above their caste system. And they are always the unwanted people or the outcasts at the bottom of the caste system who are considered rubbish and they are basically outcasts of society. There's a lot of female discrimination in India. They cannot go around feeling 100% safe. In Singapore, if you actually, like I said, walk around with bikini, you, you're totally safe, you know. I mean, you get some weird stares in here and there, a few whistles perhaps, but unless you're a guy wearing a bikini, but other than that, you're totally safe. You can walk, walk around at night in the, on Orchard Road and you are yeah, you are totally safe. You can have total peace of mind going out in Singapore by yourself. Our law is highly efficient, very strong. If anything should happen, we take it. In, we take action immediately. Then there is a stigma around this India, also known, also part of Asia. There is this stigma that. People who are deflowered or people who lose their virginity are considered unwanted anymore. Uh, it's not. It's not just in India. The whole of Asia roughly has the same mindset. Uh, for people in the US, I'm not sure about Britain, but well, the news that the view that people in Asia have about US is that you can have sex like one million times, and you still be, you know, pretty much normal, the same. Uh, if you guys don't know, there's a YouTube channel, but uh, although this uh, this is going away from the subject, but if you guys could, there's this YouTube channel called Woody's Game Attack. You can go and watch one of his videos. If I'm not wrong, it's about non-virgin girls, Male Monday. Uh, I love his series. It's very informative. But I have to disagree with him on that point because he says that, well, no matter how many times she had sex with someone else, she, if you really love her, you should forget it and you should continue loving her. That is from a international or maybe US or British perspective. But in Asia, the, 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 the rule of thought still goes that if you are deflowered, it's a nice term, if you are def deflowered or you're not a virgin, it doesn't matter for the guys. Doesn't doesn't matter. Doesn't really apply to the guys. It does to some extent, but not. I should honestly, I I I will not say too much about this. Okay? I'll just briefly say it doesn't matter to the guys. It depends on your female partner, but it matters severely to the to the, to the females. Okay, to the opposite sex. If you are female and you are, you are deflowered and you are Asian, you'll be more you. I, I won't guarantee this, but most of the time you'll be viewed as being unacceptable to most people. Of course, there are the exception. Of course, there are. I'm not saying it is hundred percent in this society, but it is. The percent the percentage and is like a thousand times higher than people in US because of the way our culture is, the way we're bred, the way our school of thought is. And yeah, there will be a stigma on people who have lost their virginity, especially on women. You don't have to say whether it's right or wrong. It's just way of thinking. It's, 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 it's like you don't go to the supermarket and say, oh, if I had, a f if I had my own farm, I'll, I'll get my, all my, my stock of apples free. Then buying from the supermarket, no, you don't say that because that is totally two different perspectives. So in this case, I, I don't want to see people saying, yes, no, uh, people who are deflowered still have, 
you know, people who are deflowered are, are seen as are seen as not being deflowered. No, this is an Asian type of view. If you aren't Asian, you you, you don't you shouldn't say anything about it. If you are Asian, you can give your take or whatever. I don't really mind whether you say yes or no, but this is the rough school of thought. No matter what you try to say, this is and has been here like this for a very long time. I'm just stating it out for you whether you like to like like it or not, whether you like it, whether it sounds pleasant in your ears or not, this is the truth. It is seen like this, therefore in Asia, India included, if you are deflowered and you're a female, you are seen of lesser value than you actually are. I, I, it is this. Yes, basically you're seen as of a lesser value. People don't want you that that sort of thing. Okay, I'm not saying. I I I try not to say further or elaborate anymore. I'll just give you the main idea of how stigma of non virgins work in. Asia, okay. Not every be reminded. Not everyone. This is just a rough gauge of the majority. I I'm not really good at explaining this. Therefore, I would not like to really elaborate much before I start confusing everyone else, including myself. But yes, don't hold, don't put to put, don't put this too much to heart if it offends you or anything. But those. People in Asia should know what I'm talking about. Those of you who aren't Asian, please don't say such, don't put any comments or whatsoever because you you're not Asian, so you wouldn't understand. It is very hard to actually have a discussion with people who immediately their first response is to rebuke you and to put you down. That is not how a conversation should work. What I am laying out is the grounding, the basic. If you have a problem with that, you can voice it out, but. There is no point, okay? And that should be about all I would like to say. Uh, if I have to add one last thing, it will be my opinion. Honestly, I I will say this once again. Things have to change. Don't care whether it needs a revolution to change it, but. I would tell you, given time, things would change. Women's rights would be more better informed. People would be better informed. The society would change. It should be like Singapore, where like everyone, you can walk around the streets seriously, very safely. The police are not corrupt. The government is not corrupt. They're totally pure. And basically, our system is much better than India's. I can't compare so much because well, I'll be just ranting if I did. And it's not really right to comment on a place that you haven't been to, but I would like to say that change must be done. Change must come soon, and as soon as possible. Because if I have a sister myself, and when she was in primary five, there was this a school like a top school. They organized a a trip for the students to go to India, and guess what? Is in New Delhi. Oh, now that I heard this, this case is in like media sensation, and she could have, she might have went to India. I don't know what the school was doing, you know. Right now, I tell you straight off, India is not a safe place to be, especially now with the consistency of rape cases going on. Considering that time when you're when you're P five, you're like what, ten, eleven years old. 10, 11 years old, if a 23 woman, 23 year old woman can be gang raped by, by men who are older than her and even that 17 year old juvenile who was younger than her, imagine a group of primary school kids going abroad to New Delhi, India for sightseeing. I could not believe it when I saw this case and then I remembered my sister could and my sister's school a top school had actually organized this type of trip. I do not know what the principal was thinking at that time or what the whole whole committee in the school was thinking about at that time, but they should very well review their overseas educational programs. In Singapore we do have overseas educational programs whereby we send the pupils go overseas to learn. I have I am my I myself have went to overseas educational programs in my school. 
uh, it is compulsory I yeah the, if you are a teacher there or you're a principal or whatever and you somehow see this video and hear this part about 15 minutes please you have to reconsider and do not send students to such dangerous places especially right now I would like to end off by saying this has been the end of episode 3 where I cover both the review and the opinion part 2 part 3 and the last episode will be covering part 4 from here on out and basically part 4 will be a tribute to her there will be a song included and please during that song it is a moment of silence and Okay, I can't conf I can't say exactly whether there will be a song because you know if you put a song there's copyright issues or whatever, but please give her a minute of silence in the part four video. I'll give a short commentary in part four, roughly a minute or two, depending, and then give her a minute of silence and pray that such things do not happen again. And if you can, please lobby for women's rights. You don't have to shout or do slogans or anything. Just be a passive person, spread the word, spread this video, make sure people watch this video so they know the true case. And oh yeah, I forgot, oh my. Okay, so in case you guys don't know what happened to her, if you read the or you see the pictures, I would say that okay, she was beaten by a metal bar multiple times and most likely leading to her head injuries, they must have hit her head real hard the metal bar please this is PG 13 right no PG 18 I would like to say PG 18 right now if you guys are under 18 this may be a little too verbal too graphic please do not continue with this skip to about the last one minute of the video no 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 please stop watching right now and that's it okay if you are under 18 right now stop watching this video and just stop okay because it is you you, you may not you may have a little bit of post traumatic stress disorder PTSD after hearing this but the moment she was transferred to Singapore in case you didn't know she was ripped a uh, rape sorry ripped raped and she was beaten most probably by a metal bar it is stated in the newspapers, the articles, the pictures, you can go and look at it, but she was beaten by a, by a metal bar, most likely causing her severe injuries and her head injuries and organ failure. And this is really graphic. I, I, my father told me this because I asked him to, but then when he, when he wanted to tell me more, I declined because I was in a state of shock. So I haven't asked him about the, the exact true story about what happened on the bus. I won't because I don't think I'm prepared to hear it, but the moment she was flown into Singapore, there were many stories around flying around in the, you know, the doctors gossip a lot. There was a lot of stories, and basically the truth came out in the story. I will just tell you one snippet of the story that that was all the doctors were talking to each other about. It is true. Uh, in she had infection because her intestines. Yeah, her, her intestines were damaged and intestines, if you guys don't know biology, I studied biology, I would tell you, but in your intestines, the large intestine, the food goes from your stomach to your small intestine before going to the large intestine. The large intestine is where water is taken out and I'll keep this simple, but water is taken out and food becomes what you call feces in your intestine. If your intestine is damaged, the feces comes out into your body and that's where major infection starts from because your layer of skin is your first and most likely ultimate layer of defense and if it gets inside your body it's very hard to stop that's why she was on a wide range of antibiotics basically what they did was they they stuffed the metal bar up her vagina must have been insanely hard because it damaged her intestines i do not want to continue with this this is the small insight I can give you from here you know how vulgar they were to her, how inhumane they were and how traumatic and painful it was for her. In the newspaper articles they said she passed away peacefully, I truly hope so. The rapists most likely if you read the articles they will be 
persecuted, lifelong imprisonment in India will be most likely what they will give her. But in India, people on lifelong imprisonment will be released on parole after 14 years. They say that in highly, highly rare cases, are they executed or given the death penalty? I don't, I, I don't think they will. I, be given the death penalty, honestly, they should. Yeah, like what I said in the previous video, not just a death penalty, not by electrocution, not by injection. A cyanide pill will be best, or the old-fashioned guillotine will be the the way to go. Public execution shouldn't be because, well, people might suffer from PTSD. I like to end off right here. Stay tuned for episode three, part four, from here on out, whereby we will have a minute of silence or two for her. And you have been with I Persona. This has been a journey into episode 2 of the New Delhi bus rape case. I hope that you have gained greater insight into this video. And although this video is longer, I hope you have stayed until the end.